see they packed it up very nicely for transport and uh, we were very impressed when we unpacked it and found the engine with all there in parts and, and bits and pieces so we were very intrigued and very interested to slowly turn it around and um, we got a little bit of a shock when we found that the engine only rotated freely a certain distance and then came to a halt there's something stopped it that we didn't want to force it so we thought well maybe something gets caught in the cam pack so we turned it very gently back the other way and um, we found about the same position, it once again comes to a halt. So we thought, well, this is just, uh, this is just not, it's just short of a full revolution. So we thought, well, this is not right. Something's definitely wrong in here. So um, we got our, our overhaul mains that we have here, which uh, has uh, been copied from a very early, early uh, piece of machinery. And um, from the cross-sectional diagram, we were able to work out how to pull it apart. So. We started by, uh, by taking the propeller flange off, which it wasn't as easy as that, but it does come off. And uh, that then takes you down to the, uh, what they call the umbrella nut, which holds the cam in place, um, which we found was removed fairly easily. And then once again, fairly difficult to get the flange because it goes into a, a little recess. But um, with a little bit of effort, that then released from the, from the flange and comes off. And that's the mechanism that drives the cams. The planetary drive, this is off the main stationary shaft as you can see, and it then through the planetary gears drives the cam pack around, and the cam pack then drives the followers up and down to open the valves. The exhaust valves spend a lot of time open because they double as an intake valve as well as an exhaust valve. They open to let the exhaust gas out and then they stay open to allow the, the fresh air to be drawn in, and it's only right at the bottom of the cylinder that some of the mixture from the crankcase is then transferred up. But we still hadn't fixed our problem of it being jammed. We thought it was one of these rollers or something, but not the case. So then by means of pulling all these out, you can get the cam out, which comes off. And there are the, the three cams. Another intriguing part of the subject that, uh, that we'll have to work on, because uh, you find that with these cylinders, nine cylinders and three cams, obviously they work more than one, one cylinder. So um, there's a, a little procedure involved with that. But then uh, the next effort, of course, is to remove the next part, which will expose uh, the main workings of the engine. And I have to keep my hand again, because it is fairly neat to fit on the bearing here. But you then expose the main valves of the engine. And this is the intriguing part that, uh, that then revealed what the problem was. As you can see, it's uh, there's the crank shaft stationary and all the cylinders going around and the problem comes to the fact that one of these pistons well we thought at first either one or eight had been put in incorrectly one is wrong because when you get around here you've got two cutouts joining each other and when you get to this one you have two pistons which collide with each other so that was the jamming is that hits there so we thought oh that's easy we turn this one around but then when you think of the engineering principle on a crank, the thrust side should be the full skirt and the cutout side is the opposite side. And so in fact, one is correct and eight are wrong. <laughs>